loving. Yeah, I don't really know how else to demo this project. We all know what's going on here, right? I put the nubbin in the wall and now it controls my lights. That's the whole thing. My work was recently described as letting the intrusive thoughts win. This project is the result of two different trains of thought completely crashing into each other. So first, I had been thinking for a while that I wanted to hook the lights above my kitchen table up to some kind of Wi-Fi situation so that I could turn them off without needing to get up from behind the table. And this may sound like kind of a lazy move, but honestly, it's exceptionally annoying to get up from this bench. And then separately, some friends and I were talking about those little red nub mice you find in the center of old IBM, now Lenovo ThinkPad keyboards. And my good pal Ben was like, what if you could control your lights with one of the nub mice? And that is the moment when the trains of thought crashed. Right then I was cursed. I knew that idea would not leave my brain until I at least made an attempt. So I'm going to tell you how I did this project, but first I'm going to very seriously tell you not to do it yourself. It requires direct usage of the mains wiring inside your wall, which if you're not being careful or you don't know what you're doing is downright dangerous. You can do permanent serious damage to yourself and or your property. Please don't let the inherent silliness of this project trick you into thinking that I don't take safety seriously. I was very, very, very careful and still I ask that you don't try this at home. Got it? Thanks. Okay, there are two obvious ways of getting your hands on a nub and mouse. The first is that you can steal one from an old laptop if you know how to do that. Or the second easier way is you can simply open up Amazon.com or AliExpress and type in TrackPoint because apparently that is the real name for these devices. You're gonna get slightly different hardware depending on if you harvest one or buy one. If you look at the ones available on the online marketplaces, most if not all of them come with a USB cable attached and that's because you're actually getting two things in one. This is the TrackPoint module itself, and it is mounted to a separate USB controller carrier board. You can see that there are actually two discrete circuit boards in this one device. And this is pretty handy because now you can just buy one, plug it directly into your computer, and immediately start nubbing away. They even put some little buttons on there, so it's basically a complete mouse ready to go out of the box. But my original thought was that I'm gonna be embedding this in my project, so I don't wanna take up a ton of space and I don't wanna deal with USB. It's great for consumer products, but for a small project like this, it's kind of a lot of overhead. I just want nubbing up, nubbing down, that's not very much data. And at first, it was looking like it would be pretty straightforward to use the TrackPoint module on its own without the USB carrier board. The TrackPoint modules, even the newest ones, I, I think, use the PS2 protocol, not that PS2, the other PS2. That's much simpler than USB and has been around since the 80s. And beyond that, some very generous GitHub users have documented all different variations of the TrackPoint hardware itself. And there's another repo that has some Arduino code for driving the TrackPoint directly. But unfortunately, things fell apart for me kind of quickly. I got a little too excited slash impatient and accidentally ripped some of the copper pads off of the TrackPoint module when I tried to desolder it from the USB carrier board. To get around that, I tried using this tiny magnet wire to solder directly to the tiny little chip that's on the module. And I think it kind of works, but it's just such a pain to work with. So 
I ended up not so gently removing this project from my desk for a few days. Eventually I came back to it and I got everything all hooked up, but now I wasn't able to see any of the PS2 serial data flowing between the track point and the USB carrier board, whereas before I was able to probe with my oscilloscope and actually verify that the data was flowing. So I took a closer look at the Arduino code I was planning on using and realized that the track point needs to be initialized before you can use it. So you have to send it some magic chunk of data before it sends anything back to you. I made one admittedly very weak attempt to get the initialization code from the Arduino sample working with my setup, and it just, it just wouldn't, so I bailed. But then I remembered I had some code just sitting around that would make using USB pretty damn trivial. So a few months ago, I did a project where I made an effects pedal for mice and keyboards. You should definitely go check that out if you haven't already. And that project uses the amazing tiny USB software library to add USB host functionality to these tiny little microcontroller boards. It was just sitting there on my own GitHub page and thankfully it worked right away. I plugged my nubbin in and I was able to see the mouse data coming through immediately on my computer. But then, this project is just a long string of but thens. But then I remembered that the only real excuse I had to spend any time on this project was that I wanted to control the lights over Wi-Fi. Guess what doesn't have Wi-Fi access? This board. Guess what does have Wi-Fi access? This board. They look similar, but they're not. What did I do? I just smashed them together. I just, I just put them right together. You know, not the most elegant solution by any means, but it still doesn't take up very much room. And I'm definitely not the first person to add an entirely separate processor to bring network connectivity to a project. I dropped one in the snow. So to review, the track point is talking PS2 to the USB controller. The USB controller is talking USB to the RP2040 board. The RP2040 board is talking via a simple serial connection to the Wi-Fi board, which is also hosting a cute little web app so that you can control your lights from your phone or your computer. This all sounds so ridiculous when I say it out loud. But I do have a soft rule that I try to follow for projects like this, which is that if I can chart a path to a finished working version using only tools, parts, skills that I already have, I am going to take that path first, even if the result is almost certainly gonna be clunky. And that's because it is very important to me to prove that the idea deserves existing and to give myself the reward of being able to play with it and touch it before I go down any optimization rabbit holes. I find that the motivation I get from being able to really feel the project and, and kind of know it early on helps me to get through any sticky bits that I encounter later on. Okay, so we are rapidly approaching the end of this video and you might be saying, how is he actually talking to the lights? And it's a valid question. I'm just gonna pause one more time and request that you don't try this at home. We're in the danger zone here. But yeah, I used an AC dimmer, which is a piece of hardware that's designed exactly for this purpose. This one here is the MPDM V8.2 designed by ESP8266-projects.com and you can get that on Tindy or from another website that I'm forgetting at this very moment. There are a few different options you can get on Tindy or even Etsy, but this one had a bunch of the features I was looking for. Specifically, it has an included AC to DC converter so you can power the microcontroller directly from it and it also had a built-in fuse and varistor 
for protection purposes. You can also get this one with a Wi-Fi board and included software built right in, but I knew I was gonna have to DIY that part anyways, so I saved a couple bucks. For reasons that I hope are very obvious by now, I'm not gonna talk any more about the wiring for the lighting. There are some non-obvious reasons as well. My toes got very, very cold and my microphone battery died while I was shooting. I will quickly show the final faceplate with the nubbin installed. And if you look around back, um, you can see if it'll focus, I had to chop off bits of the PCB on either side here just so I could fit it behind here. Uh, if I mounted it straight, it wouldn't be able to screw in. Um, and because I had to put it at an angle, I also had to change my code so that I wasn't looking at straight up and down mouse velocity, I was looking at a slightly angled version of that. The wires here make up the USB connection and I probably won't be able to get it to focus, but the two microcontroller boards are soldered together using standard header pins. This is how it connects to the AC dimmer. I will leave links to all of the resources I've mentioned in the description below, and I should be back with another safer, more wholesome project video in the coming weeks, time permitting. So thanks for watching until the end. And I'll see you then.